Virginia and I'm an anarchist. And today, I'm here on this fine September day <laughs> spreading the message of freedom to help illuminate the, um, the majors of the propaganda of the state all around us. Um, I have this new uh, Litecoin uh, Bitcoin address you can now find in the about section of each of these uh, video. And uh, I guess pretty much if you want to help support, uh, produce a lot of this content, wanted to help uh, spread this message, um, any kind of donations, you know, especially if it's Bitcoin, especially if it's anonymous, just leave me a message and say that, you know, you left, uh, you, you helped support it at this such and such time and date. And uh, what would your name is? So I, could, I will gladly love to uh, attribute uh, you as a producer credit to all these videos uh, at the end of the, uh, the video of that particular day. Uh, you'll find this at the end of every video at the uh, like its last four or five seconds. And you no, know, to help uh, to show your support, to show that clearly there's other people who also are invested, even though sometimes it's difficult to have the time to come out. I uh, myself will be. Well, starting uh, next Monday, um, pretty much every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, every day of the week, um, of course, weekdays. <laughs> Unless people are out here on Saturdays and other events, of course, on the weekends, but for the most part, I'm going to be here every weekday. Uh, unless it's for any, of course, philosophy rank doesn't really mix that well. I'm trying to figure that one out. Maybe a uh, <laughs> big tent or something like that. But uh, for the most part, that's pretty much how it's going to go from now on. I've already made arrangements with my uh, with my employer. Uh, he's a big supporter of, uh, of, of all of this, too. Uh, just recently, I was talking about uh, registering for a table, for example, at a accounting fair and in opposition to the political tables that are, that are already set up there. You know, the vote for governor, vote for your political masters, uh, just the same old, same old stuff. So now I have good arrangements. I have a good place in my life right now where I can start doing this on, as a, as a daily, on a daily basis. And for me, it's kind of important. For me, it's, uh, you know, every, every day that goes by, I don't feel like I'm actually out here. It feels like a day lost or a day remissed on um, doing a little bit more than I, than I in, in, in the way and the capacity that I know that I can. So uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Please donate if you can and enjoy the content. See you at the victory party. To help me kind of uh, elaborate on what I'm writing about uh, and to make an effective argument, because I know I'm going to be attacked about this whole Constitution thing, how the Constitution is the greatest, you know, uh, government contract, and it's why we're such a free society today, and why, you know, but because we have decentralized government, it's why public administration is not as effective. Right. That's the argument, right. basically, in, in a nutshell. But, you know, because it's decentralized, you know, maybe we don't have such a good public administration, it's a little inefficient, but it protects against corruption. Right. That is like the overarching theme that it protects against corruption. But what about collusion and all these other factors that that are obviously apparent? You know, uh, the 83 percent of the uh, politicians who voted uh, for the strike in Syria recently, right, yeah, yeah. get military funding from military contractors. So uh, there's they can't afford to lose those voters. There's obviously a conflict of interest there, and um, you know. So, but I mean, how do I write about this? And I mean, it is a reflection essay so yeah. it's like what's my opinion about it but I don't want to get so deep into uh, criticizing the government where statists can't really see where I'm coming from yeah, yeah, yeah. you see what I mean well uh, I guess there's a lot of different ways to kind of bring about and break it down one you can uh, like they try to talk about like that it's a contract like you're mentioning it's a social contract okay so you can just start off from there all right it's a contract uh, show me this contract show me proof and evidence that I signed this contract you know like a mortgage contract you can show me that yeah. you know I signed there are a, a contract for, for a house for, for a car or um, something tangible something explicit right yeah. um, something that I agree to the terms and to the outcomes of those terms yeah. right so show me this contract let's start off with the uh, objective uh, facts first right I guess your birth certificate would be that I your mean, birth yeah but uh, yeah your birth certificate um, I mean I, I didn't agree to it but you didn't agree to maybe it my you didn't agree to Social Security either. No. Uh, you didn't agree to these uh, four services. And if they're afraid of, uh, I guess, corruption, uh, you know, and, and defining corruption, I guess, would be a good place to start. Uh, I guess that which is, um, I would imagine, goes against the, the interests, or I guess usually that involves theft, yeah. right? So I guess define theft, right? A lot of, they, they, they like to use a lot of vague words yeah. to kind of uh, entangle the uh, objective and uh, abstract concepts, right? Yeah, yeah. So of course, uh, you define theft as well. The best way I used to like doing is just defining violence. So let's define violence then, right? Placing a person in an involuntary position without their consent or choice. I rape, murder, theft, and assault. I uh, contracts that you never signed for, right? That's far fraud. Um, so you can kind of break down the whole thing from from just from first basic principles, instead of having to go too far. What about uh, like hidden violence? Like uh, I get I lure you in with some piece of you know 
uh, I incentivize you to give give your consent towards something, would that still be violence? Uh, like I incentivize you to participate in the system of violence by giving you... Uh, bribing you. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah I guess yeah, it yeah. would still be violence, right? Um, it's... Well, I guess for, for the most part... All right, so so kind of so that's pretty much what politicians do. They yeah, uh, yeah. they bribe you, they trick you, they 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 pretty much commit fraud and say you give me your time, your money, your energy, your campaign dollars, your commitment, uh, and in return, I mean that's what a political ruler is supposed to do is um, grant, grant you more, defend your freedoms or grant you more freedoms, right? Same measure of success as in the military. Uh, so all right, great. If that's the measure of success as a politician, you know they're supposed to safeguard those freedoms. Or what, what else are they? What's their job for in the first place, right? Yeah. And you just look at that as a measure of success and look at the size of government and the scope has never decreased uh, ever in, in, in its history. You know, it only keeps getting bigger and bigger. We continue to lose more and more freedoms. Uh, so that, that is a uh, sense of fraud in that you just defrauded me. You just took all my time. You took my, me with my property, my money and, and donating. Um, and the result, it doesn't go anywhere except for your own, lining your own pockets. Okay, so let me bring this back. Okay, I want to, I mean, I'm trying to make a, I guess, an essay design. So, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So I have the contract, I have uh, defining, this maybe, maybe start out by, by defining the state, then go into... Define concept, a contract. De define a contract, then defining violence. Yeah. Uh, that's inherent with forced contracts, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Go off, like, look, you can't, like, who had the power of attorney? Right? Otherwise, that's fraud if you're forcing signatures. Yeah. If you're forcing a contract into another person. Yeah. You can start out even from first base and just define contracts. Uh, and Is the Constitution a contract? Right. <laughs> uh, it's not. It's not. <laughs> um, then why does everyone abide by it? Yeah, yeah. So, so where, where did this idea what? come from? Um, you know, it's not a... You know, if it's such a great contract, can I create my own contract and, uh, and, and pass that off to other people and have it enforced too? Can you say, uh, in this geographic region, I'm going to force a product onto you, maybe two weeks from now, and I'll give you maybe a month to pay that off, you know? But you have to pay it. Like if I, I don't know, if I sell you, uh, I, I give you uh, like MacBooks or something like that. Here's some MacBooks, here's some price costs. I'll look forward, we could do like maybe a monthly payment plan or whatnot, but you know, at the end of the day, you're gonna have to pay me for this. It's like, oh, I didn't want that MacBook in the first place, or I didn't want that service and product in the first place, you know? So that's pretty much what the Constitution does in that geographic region. I know that some friends do that with these two sometimes. They'll give you something free and then a month later they're like, hey, can you help me fix my car? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway. Yeah, I guess uh, trying like, to play no, your emotions. You yeah, don't yeah. have to give it to me for free. <laughs> and that's what I say, but I always accept it. But yeah, definitely. When someone does come talk to you, you probably want to be on this side, yeah. on your side, so that they're not distracted. Yeah, 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 that'd be cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, the contract would be fun because yeah, define contract then, and you know, you'll, you'll, you'll define it and systematically go into that. It's not a real contract. It's just a document, just a piece of paper. A piece of paper is not going to protect you from violence. Doesn't protect you from bullets. Doesn't protect you from from thugs with guns. Um, from wars. Uh, but see, that's, I feel like that's talking about anarchy, and I'm not so sure I really want to do oh, that. You, you, you are, yeah, so there's a way to talk about it indirectly without having to say the word. Uh, yeah. I, I've read a lot of essays that I never really uh, talk, talked about, like for example, I had a lot of um, uh, economic classes, and so I start off defining what a free market is and what a state-controlled market is. Because uh, and I, and so I criticized the book, I criticized the contents because sometimes they say, well, these are free market policies, wrong. Either it's free or it's not. Yeah. Right? Well, when they just even say the word private, right? You know, it's like it's very difficult to understand what they mean by private. And they will never define it. They won't define what a, like a citizen is, and that's why they don't really want to define contracts for you. Uh, so there's a lot of words that they'll do so much to what is a avoid. A, right? a person who is forced under the contract. Forced under the contract? Yeah, I guess. Um, I, guess so. I mean, what do you mean? Like even when they, when they try to define a social contract, it's very vague uh, in an abstract sense of the term. Yeah. Uh, nothing tangible against something objective that you can see, yeah. right? And the whole entire system is built up of abstract concepts. Because um, the moment you can realize and separate the two, and then you'll realize that that's when you realize the tax base is nothing but theft or an extortion. It's not. There's no difference from that, you know. And then you realize, well, there's no difference. And this goes back to peaceful parenting. There's no difference from you hitting a person just because he's uh, tall. Love that video, by the way. Uh, there was one where you were talking to two people one day, and it was just like you asked them, like, so is that how you want? 
uh, me to treat you if you don't understand something and you want me to hit you. <laughs> and he was, he thought about it and I think that's when it's clicked in his head, you know, he's like, oh yeah, that's very contradictory for me to hit a kid. You know? Right. So, um, so if you make a mistake three times, it's okay for me to hit you if yes. you don't understand me, yes. right? Because you have to universalize that principle. Very yeah. Kantian in a way. Yeah, yeah. And us? And that's the thing with uh, what the stuff was talking about, universally objective ethics. Oh yeah, universal preferable behavior. Yeah. Uh, his way of um, trying to show, for, for the most part, the preferences that we have are kind of universal. Uh, also in the same aspect of it, like two people can't steal from each other without one person uh, not want to be having that property being stolen from. So like we're in a room, we're trying to steal each other's like game box or something like that, or or uh, GameCube, I don't know. Uh, the moment that I resist, I'm showing a preference to not wanting my property being stolen from. Yeah. So it's a contradictory saying that, you know, when people say everybody steals, every, it's, you know, it's a natural thing. Actually, it's just a preference against not wanting to do that. Um, and this goes to like argumentative ethics by uh, Hans Hermann uh, Hoppe, who kind of states like um, the fact that we argue, so we have a preference to, uh, we own our words, we own our, our discussions and our ideas, and that we prefer to exchange these ideas in a voluntary format than to start off aggressing, right? Uh, the fact that we take a moment to say hi or, or talk, that's, that's, that's a preferred way of uh, interacting. Not like, bam! <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? of course. Yeah, so would it, would it mean that, because in this article, um, they say that men are inherently corruptible, so they cannot be trusted with, you know, to be left with their own devices and their own voluntary associations because they will take advantage of other people, right? right. That is the assumption why we need the Constitution. Um, so I feel like in this essay, I have to combat that. I have to combat that children are born, you know, like free the, of corruption. They're, yeah. they're born clean slate, and they're corrupted by the environment. Right, 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 right. So they're born with like a tabula rasa, clean slate. Yeah. So I'd have to bring in that maybe that nature versus nurture debate. I don't know. I'd, 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 uh, I'm thinking something like that. All right, just just bring up. Uh, I guess the example. You know, a child uh, doesn't kind of grow up uh, learning. Like I guess we're talking about Shintoism in uh, in Japan, right? Uh, a, a child here, born here, doesn't grow up uh, understanding that cultural aspect. You know, doesn't become a Shintoist you know, if that's never been introduced to him. Yeah, uh, and that yeah. pretty much goes with every kind of form of um, of interaction and the any ideas. If you're not introduced to that, if it's not shown to you, you you're not going to understand the language. You're not going to have this tacit knowledge and uh, uh, putting that into action. Uh, so violence is pretty much the same thing. You know. Uh, and, that's, and I guess for me, I find that that pretty much ties to why people don't question government. And, and in the way that the parental involvement with the child is, you know, uh, the child will ask why. Why, why, why? And then eventually, inevitably, the, the parent wants to claim more authority, doesn't want to show or pretend to actually want to pretend they know everything. And instead of just being honest and just saying, I don't know, there's nothing wrong with saying, I don't know. And instead, they want to say, because I said so, because I'm your father, because I'm your mother. Or sometimes they say, oh, how dare you talk back, trying to be a little asshole, smart ass. Right? Don't you talk back? Yeah. And then, so they grew up obeying authority, not questioning. Uh, and then you have government and people like, don't you dare question government. What, are you unpatriotic? Right, are you a terrorist? Yeah. Right? If you don't like it, why don't you like, get out of here? Why don't you move? Right? Well, that's why I don't speak up in this class. Because yeah. uh, one person commented like, well, there are these pockets of people that don't agree with what the government's doing and that the government is you know, forcing people to do it. And he even said, used the word force, which I was surprised. I mean, he was a political science major, so hopefully he knows something about that. But then define um, government. That's a great place to start. Yeah, but he, he, he continued his statement saying that, oh, you know, but these libertarians, you know, and, like these Tea Partiers, you know, it was, it was immediately associated, like it's already probably propaganda in his, his mind that people who don't prefer force right. are Tea Party. Right. Like that's the equivalence, you know. So, uh, well, hey, uh, it's still in the beginning of the semester. I can still kind of sneak into these classes. Uh, tell me the next time you have this class, uh, like uh, maybe the next uh, 
to work tomorrow Friday. I could come in and take into one of these classes or anytime next week. Uh, like I'll, I'll be in a, I'll be a student saying, hey, I'm, I'm here, I'm interested in taking a class, so I'm kind of curious what this is about, and I'll, I'll interject. I mean, I think registration's over. Though. Well, registration's over, but people can't freely go into any class just to see what it's like. Uh, yeah, yeah, it happens all the time. Um, you wouldn't need permission? No, no permission. No, I just go in and say, hey, um, I'm interested in probably taking this class next semester, just kind of curious, mind if I sit by? And so, yeah, go ahead, absolutely. And uh, I mean, I think you would probably be, I mean, the yeah, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll definitely just email you the uh, class time. That'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. That'd be a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, you could probably go to any public administration class, honestly, and just kind of sit there and count the amount of contradictions. I mean, right? like, I even scripted everything that the, the guy said, uh, the instructor, I, I scripted it out. There was like 15 points, it was like, oh, this rate's great, well, I even have it written down here. Let me see if I can find it. You curious? Major, so You're anything, probably side. <laughs> anything, anything government got my attention. Yeah. All right. How is government immoral? Great I've question. Heard everything. You've heard everything. I've heard. Promise you have every argument in the book. All right, then you're gonna love this one because I don't think you've ever heard this. One. Hit me. Hit me with it. Hit me. Hit me. Hit me. I'll take it. <laughs> All right, come a little closer. It's for uh, YouTube channel. It's a video, so pretty much I'm gonna ask you three simple questions. All right. And then very briefly discuss the hidden violence behind government and its immorality. Okay. And then ask what your thoughts and comments are. Sounds yeah. good to me. Sounds good. All right. And that's the hidden violence behind government, and that only knows how to solve problems to one way, singular way, and that's to the threat of a use of violence versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions that you, us three, already share. Correct. So that's, that's, that's the matrix. The government has a monopoly on services they force upon you to accept and pay for. They have a monopoly on law. They have a monopoly on courts, on judges, on roads, on security, on schools. So you don't have the freedom to cancel. Uh, or opt out of any law. Yeah. Yes. Or have the freedom to create a better service that's not going to be harmful to right. the consumer. However, my counter, my counter argument. Please, please, now. please. Yes, yes. We're standing in the middle of a public, public, in a public college, correct? Sure. This is a university that's funded by the state. Sure. One of the largest in the state. Sure. It's a lot of money every year from our taxpayer dollars. Yeah. And I'm very pleased with my education here. Uh, the pleasing the increase of tuition. I mean. I'm pleased with my education, even if the tuition's going up because taxes are going up and everything's going right. up because no, no one knows up. how to control the fucking economy. Right, you because can't. all of economics right. is just a theory and it's all total bullshit anyway, and I don't subscribe to any normal economic theories. Right. However, I believe in all this. I believe in government for one reason, because government should theoretically, in its purest form, be a, collecti be a collectivization of everyone's ideas and the shared and the general shared moral values. However, the problem with our government is that it does not reflect our views. But it's not can't ours. It's not mine. To it doesn't reflect the collect. It doesn't reflect the collective views of most people. Right. Most people in the United States are pro cannabis. But let me ask the question before legalization are yeah. against war in Syria or right. against this, that, and the other thing. But our government doesn't represent that because we make poor decisions and because of power games that have been played in the government since the early 1900s. Districts are rigged in certain ways so that they cannot elect proper representatives to represent the people, the collective, the by and large moral values of that certain group of people. Sure, uh, I, I get that too. Yeah. Uh, but so, but let's back up for one second. So you're saying without stealing everyone's wealth, because the majority of people want schools, that there wouldn't be no schools if you didn't have to steal from people? There would be schools, okay. but those schools would be very selective and very few and far between because, yes, people will get together and create schools and they would work together to create them, but the standards of education would be different across the board. So say the standards of education in Fairfax County would be different from Henrico County here. Yeah, but where the they don't have, well, yeah, and then the standards yeah. over there is where they have to uh, cheat for the students so they can get high passing scores. Yeah. Where, so here's the thing with monopolies. Anytime you have a monopoly in any service, the cost of that always goes up and increases, like you're, you're what we were talking about, Correct. and the quality always goes down. Right, it becomes yes. unsustainable and eventually you it falls in on itself. Right. Like you'll never have social security in your lifetime. Probably so that's never. Yeah. Probably never. Probably. Eventually that's why they have a monopoly on state schools. That that's why the tuition always goes up. Yes. So you don't have the freedom to see what it could be like if there was no buying monopoly. Tuition would be lowered. It probably would be uh, not, not as costly as it is today. And you you'll have uh, you still have schools, you'll still have roads, you still have security. At least you'll have security that's tangible to the consumer. Yeah. Like Netflix trying to raise their prices overnight and people are like, oh forget that, cancel and subscribe, go to Hulu. Exactly. Right? People People do that all the time, though. That's the what do you mean that people did that all the time? People do that with Netflix and like consumer values. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. But government exists because people need. Government, I feel, is kind of a natural occurrence. We define people. government. A collectivization of, of a way how to run and organize things. Humans seek order, I believe. Personally, I believe that humans, as a collective whole, were programmed to seek order and seek a way to maintain a status quo. You know what I'm saying? Right, yeah, we can like have that. order, we can have yeah. rules. And that I government agree, yeah. is the natural way that just over time people have managed to come together in the last hundred years or so. People have, like, the mo our modern systems of government throughout the world 
by and large in first world countries such as here and Europe, right. people have come together and created governments in that way because that's how they rationalize and they maintain the idea, that's how they rationalize how to maintain order, by creating and electing or appointing people right, right, right. to maintain and enforce their moral values and then the over time, and then over time, politicians get the power trip in their head and they think that they are above the people who elected them, which in fact they should not be, which I think is a big problem that we have. That, yeah, I agree. That, I agree. Uh, that our politicians think that they are above us. They are in fact not. They are. They are members of society whose job is to maintain, protect, and give a voice to their constituents and maintain and make sure that everyone's values are sort of melded together into something right, livable right, right. for everyone. So, all right, all right. so what do you think then uh, what happened if you didn't have a government? Do you think we still have rules we without political rules, rules? Because everyone would get together. Right, we have and this come together and maintain order. Yeah. a different t style of order, which would eventually maybe grow into some sort of government. Well, government it would be a polycentric in, legal system because yeah. government has a monopoly on law. Yes. So you don't have the freedom to have communities of preferences. Government yes. can only force one preference onto everyone. Either everyone likes There's cannabis or, or they everyone don't. Everyone like cannabis. Right? Yeah. Uh, so the thing is, so they force one single preference onto everyone. You don't have the freedom to explore your preferences, right? That's and, so, and, that's, and that's what government is like you're saying, this collective. Uh, well, it's a small group of people, you know, political yeah. rulers, city council members, Congress. The problem they're the is ones, strangers, we, arbitrating, dictating what's best nobody, No, because our job as people, besides living in the society and working to maintain order by ourselves and as individuals by respecting and upholding certain yeah. laws that we find acceptable, like, you know, don't kill, don't steal, things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. We maintain that every day by not going out and holding a gun to somebody and taking their money. Yeah, yeah. Except for some, say for a few individuals who Call don't. the government. Well, also, Taxation is nothing but that. Well, it is in a way, but it also isn't. I, well, well, how is I it not? My, is it voluntary? To, Otherwise, it would be called charity, right? There's a difference. There's something consensual and non-consensual. Like, yeah. rape is cons non-consensual. Love making is consensual. Correct. Taxation okay. and theft and well, all these I things that violate property rights. I consent to pay my taxes, and I'm happy to pay my taxes, yeah. even if the money is going to something I don't support. All right, great. Because part of my money yeah, yeah. will inevitably like go choice. into something it's that... It's not like you have a choice. Have a choice. Yeah, right. Would I gladly not pay taxes, but pay a portion of taxes that goes to the military? Gladly, because I think that... Right, I don't. But I still pay my so, taxes because, because you're under I, threat. If you don't pay your taxes, they're, they're throwing showcase like, like they did with Blessed Sniper for three years. Yes, they, they did that. Part of the I know. So like, well, what it, what it's not a choice. Yeah, yeah, you pay, pay because you have to. No, not man. because I have to. Because I want to. I want to pay my taxes yeah, yeah, yeah. because <laughs> I live in the society and I'm happy to live in the society. All right, all right, all right. Okay, society. What you say is a halfway decent society to live in. No, it's not. You got over a million people in cages for you have over 75 percent of them for victimless crimes. More and more, you're imprisoned and dehumanized more people than any other countries in the world. More than China, more than India, I wouldn't say that's civilized. I wouldn't say forcing your ideas onto each other and call that a government, that's civilized. We can still have rules, like we're saying, the national tendencies to order. But I guess the, I guess the point down here, I'll here trying to make, is that this moral stance that you and I already share, yeah. right, against using violence to solve problems, that's called anarchy. Yes, right? Like uh, in science, anions and cations, an means without, archy means political rules. Like monarchy, one political ruler, anarchy means without political rules. We can have rules, we can have a polycentric legal system, we can still have security, we can still have roads. So, yes, consented by the people who live in this community. Yeah. Yeah. But would you say that by and large, stories. most people, because like they've grown up in this system, not necessarily the matrix. Forced, the other right. not forced it like, really? them, but you know, the people who started no it. You know, right. let's, go, let's go back to the Revolutionary War when yeah, so George Washington's founding right. fathers decided, you know, they weren't What do you call father? They didn't yank, they just said The founding fathers, as the term has been coined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the people who... All right, let's make a different term for them. It sounds very religious at that point, you're calling the founding fathers. The text with the ten... I'm not a religious man, I just don't... Yeah, 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 yeah. But let's put it this way. When they decided that they had had enough the system that their system didn't work for them. No, they took up. They took up a. They it's took up at first a peaceful yeah, means to try and overthrow it, and then they went and resorted to violence. Should we, because we don't like the system, resort to violence to destroy and create a new system? No. Is that it? And therefore, therefore. So the reason I'm coming out here today is I want to let's use our real voice to yeah. reach out and connect to one another, yeah. and we realize we already started this fundamental balance against violence, and then we realize we actually use our voice and connect with one another and turn to our community. We never needed a government to begin with, right? To kind of go outside the matrix of the propaganda and the lies that they teach you here, they're saying that without government, you know, it's going to be chaos, you'll never have, a, you'll never have civilization. Of course that's what they will want to tell you. Of course they want you to think because yeah. they don't want you to take down the system. However, right. the system can be brought down by more peaceful means, you, you know, can't. electing different parties. I voted third party in the election because and, and, I and how, and how, well, well, great, so tell me how much has the government shrunk since? None, because none. They don't shrink. The government keeps growing, but the government keeps growing in different ways. And if you can't the shrink the government, make, if the people use their own voice, 
Right. Like, it's yeah, exactly. That's what they'll say. Well, just participate. And it's like, for me, so what? So what if they legalize cannabis tomorrow? How long did that take? 75 years is not a measure of success to gain one scrap of our freedoms, but to have lost so many others in the same amount of time. That's a distraction. They want you to keep being distracted by the matrix. So they put the third parties out there just for you to, to think you can still change the system. They think you can still, you know, they'll hold the carrot of your freedom up here. As long as you keep thinking government's the only way, of course, it takes forever. The reason why the two-party system exists in the first place is because nobody checked the government. Nobody cared enough. They try to. The government is purposely is purposely built to make sure that it maintains its own power. The government which was is the problem with government. It was However, created by the founding towers in the first place. These are the political rulers. These are the new kings. Correct. These are the new political masters. Of course, you set it up that way so you can't escape. The only way they will want to tell you this so you can't think of any other way outside of it but through their system that they created. This constitution is not a real contract. It's not. It's, they call it a social contract, it's a but living, it's not a, it's a living document. So, well, show me this yeah. contract that you did. It's Sign it, right? You didn't give some power attorney on your behalf when you were not born yet. You cannot force a contract until they're on board. The tyrants did in secret in Philadelphia, close to shutters, and in secret in a small room, they drafted this constitution so they can force onto everyone and onto the on board so they can ensure that their power is going to be in place in generations to come. You look at uh, John Adams passed the Alien Sedition Act. First ruling tyrant they're passing out. You can't disagree with them unless you want to be thrown into a cage. Well, the Alien Sedition Act didn't even really come into effect until World War one and then after that a lot of these are your founding several, tyrants who are already thinking of this Supreme acting Court very tyrannical took the alien and sedition act and broke it down into something completely different doesn't matter these, yeah. that's what they created yeah. and a person they needs a it, but it's now an obsolete law and laws become obsolete all the time sections of the constitution for example prohibition we got rid of that didn't we well yeah government because created prohibition in the first they place it, and yeah they, create, they try to fix the problems they created there's still prohibition today they have a monopoly on alcohol abc is nothing but a monopoly on the manufacturing on, on the distribution the and retail sale. Yeah, I'm aware of this. Yeah, I'm that's, aware of that's still prohibition. They didn't get rid of it. Personally, I subscribe to more communist, more communist style living yeah. ideas. Yeah, I yeah, agree yeah. with you in a lot of senses. Well, However, I do th I do believe that government and it's like a rock go government in some so, like, shape and, wall of, wall and form. Like, like, some way, shape and form. Not necessarily the government we have. I don't agree with a lot of our government right now. I disagree with them. I'm really mostly playing devil's advocate. Right, 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 right. Just because you're sitting around here with a sign and I like playing devil's advocate. Sure, sure, sure. kind of my thing. But, you know, our current government is obviously flawed in numerous ways, and we could go on for... It's not flawed, it was designed years. that way. Years. It's not an error, there's nothing wrong with, or like one aspect of it. The whole thing the is whole wrong. Thing the whole is thing is founded through violence again. Because the whole thing is a broken system. It's not broken, designed, it was designed it's a that way. system designed to keep normal people down. Wrong. However, Do you call it the mafia system of extorting people broken? That's the way they're founded. Taxation is nothing but extortion. That's not broken, that's not an error, it's immoral. It's not like, a, well, this aspect of extorting people is wrong. We should do it in a nice blood way. You're still extorting people. You're still stealing from people. That's wrong in that of and of itself. Right? Yes. Good ideas don't require force. Good ideas are not mandatory. Good, good ideas, ideas good ideas require someone who knows what they're talking about and is able to convey the message and convince people to willingly yeah, do like, it. They're called Kickstarter campaigns. They start being entrepreneurs. They start uh, running a business. Like, um, I don't know, a good idea that to say, hey, yeah, I have a great idea. Guys, let's get behind it. But the thing is, I, I subscribe to government in a way that government is a collective agreement by the current people living in that system. Did you, you agree to it? Yeah. You consent. Well, what about the I people who don't consent? Are you going to still force your ideas no. onto them? Because should the idea of government is a collectivization of the majority, the vast majority of most moral values. Onto the minority. The greatest evil is, is not, it's the greatest good for the majority is still the greatest evil unto the minority. But the majority evil is still evil. Now, theft is still theft. It doesn't matter what different ways you want to call it. Otherwise, you're just forcing a preference. We can still have a rich plurality, diverse of communities of preferences. You don't need a government. You can have a policy that you're people system. That is it's not a government. That's voluntary. Yeah, it's a voluntary type of government. No, no, government is not voluntary. That's for here. You can still have security. You can still have roads. You can still have schools. You can have it in a way that people want it. You don't need to force people to to, to fund that which they already want, right? And when you do that with the government services, that's what a monopoly is because you can't compete. You don't have the freedom to compete against their monopoly. If you try to, they'll throw you to a Page. Yeah. Right. The, the currency that you have in dollar in your, in your in your pocket today. That's also another monopoly. Before 1913, there used to be a rich variety of different kinds yeah, of currencies. Yeah, but that dollar we have is not controlled by the government. That dollar is owned by a private corporation. Who, who created that? The Federal Reserve, right? Who created the Federal Reserve? The government.
government. It's right. not a government function. function. The government it's created. Private, yeah, they control the people who own private monopoly, which is not a private. Another the immoral government argument. created that. It's like they created the USPS. They have a monopoly on first class mail because the government has a monopoly on currency. Because it's not the Fed that throws you into a cage if you compete against the currency. It's the IRS. It's the government agency. Like this guy trying to create the Liberty Dollar a few years ago. His own currency backed with precious metals. The government came in, seized this asset, threw him in a cage. You're not allowed to keep against the might buy a monopoly. Because most because the idea they created the idea of currency because competing currencies. They didn't create the idea of currency. Out. Currencies yeah, existed long before they created their currency because competing currencies don't work out. They because you could go to a retailer, right? You can go to a retailer, any retailer, yeah, 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 yeah. and say you walk in, let's just use euros to dollars for example. Just for just for a still monopoly, some currency. It's still monopoly, but just say we say some stores here accept euros because they choose to accept euros. But the vast majority of retailers accept something different. Say you open up a store in the middle of say you open up a store in the middle of Berlin and you decide you will take American currency even though you are a German citizen let's just work within, yeah, 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 the, let's yeah. work within the system right now just for example so you're forced to live in the let's currency just, you're forced to use let's work yeah. with it for example sake yeah, let's yeah, just work yeah. within it yeah, yeah, yeah. for example sake we're working within it and you open up a store in the middle of Germany that's not on one of the multiple US military bases which shouldn't be where they are yeah, yeah. and you open up the store in the heart of Berlin right next to the Brandenburg Gate and you're selling American items people walk in with euros and you tell them you don't, they, they walk in with their euros and they try to pay me euros like I don't accept euros but they can't get anything else because the idea of cur because currencies have been created and they're so rooted in in ground where they are that it doesn't matter like so why not just have the conversion rates to stay within the system of currency well, well, well I'm a business owner why don't you let me decide what's best for my shop why don't you let me decide what's best for my business to say if I want to be in business obviously this is the type of currency I want to accept you know what I wouldn't accept any of those currencies I would accept Bitcoin a digital currency actually that now exists it's outside the monopoly of currency yes because you're talking about also under attack by the Fed yeah the Fed's trying to attack it because they can't regulate it they can't tax it but it's not going to work it's designed to be an underground currency at the yeah. same time with the dollar in your pocket it's lost over 97 percent of its value since it was monopolized you want to talk about something that's, that hurts the people the worst that's what hurts the poor the worst there's no incentive to save every dollar you hide underneath your bed mattress depreciation value and of course you will never hear about this in any economic class here because they don't want to tell you the truth well, of the current economics is just theory and economics is completely and totally retarded right, right, because so I cannot, the, the, the idea of an economy the idea of the of, an, of a global economy is completely and outwardly retarded because no one knows how to control an economy and all these debates about what to do right. with the economy. So why have a government in the first place that's trying to centralize, plan the, the, the lives of everyone's affair and conduct what they, how they, and they should not run their lives? Why would anyone want to control an economy? You can't control an economy. That's the point. Economies yeah. don't. You can't control an economy. And every government interaction they try to, is trying to control. They try to control it because they want to have a handle on money. Yeah. That's the problem. Appearance of Economies can't be controlled. When you have regulations on economies, you're able to semi-regulate it and keep some sort of check and balance on it, but you can't control the economy. That's yeah. why glass steel got a deal. Uh, well, one way that the government does can't control the, uh, the economy is by controlling the uh, the commodity you're allowed to exchange goods for. That's yeah. called money. Money is like another good, another commodity, like a paper clip or a car. Except this is the forced commodity. You're only allowed to trade it, although it's depreciating in value. So, of course, in the long term, it's going to be worthless, right? And that hurts everyone already to begin with. So the I thing mean, is, that's should what be, government it should has. be backed by something. The currency should be backed by something that has tangible value to most people. Well, that's that, well. The thing is, you shouldn't be forcing your your currency on anyone. You should, you should allow the freedom for people to compete, yes. right? I don't want to talk about so much the effects of how government should solve it. The thing is, on a base principle, they violently force you to accept it. They violently prevent you from competing. They will throw you into a cage if you dare compete against a monopoly. There's a guy called Lysander Spooner over 100 years ago who tried to compete against a monopoly on first-class mail, the United States Postal Service. Yes. And uh, back then it cost $3.50 to, to deliver mail because the Constitution says that they have a right to establish a post office. They didn't give them the exclusive right. So it's like, well, why can't I compete? So Competed. He created the letter, uh, the American Letter Mail Company. Yes. He brought down the prices. He did efficiently, faster, effective, better. and it was working better. Uh, the government hated it, so they tried to sue him. Uh, eventually, he got burned with so much legal debt, they forced him out of business, and then Congress just passed an arbitrary law piece of paper saying no one's allowed to compete, and that's why there's $60 billion in debt. Yes. And that's what I mean. Monopolies just go down. dollars in debt for multiple reasons, such as going to wars that we had no business seeking. Uh, going you have no, we have no business seeking our notes. But not so much that we, you have no freedom to say, I don't want to support it. You have the freedom to say you don't support it. You have no what, freedom. What no, 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 no. But to act on your opinion, you don't have that. To say, I don't support it means nothing if you cannot withdraw the funds that you're forced to fund to give them. Right? That means nothing because if you can't act on your opinion, it means nothing. They'll let you say, yeah, you can say it, but they don't allow you the freedom to act on that opinion. If you want to fund war, great, take out 
out your checkbook and give him all your money. But don't fund, do, don't force me to do that award. I agree. Right. With that. But you can't. That's not how government works. Well, I live in the system, and I'm okay with it. Right. You're forced to live in the system. The problem is, I'm content with living in the system. Even though I'm being forced to do it, I'm content with the system. I'm happy with where I am. Are you okay with uh, millions of people throwing into cages for victimless crimes? Are you okay with the ninety-seven dollars, uh, ninety-seven percent depreciation of the value of currency? Are you okay that people are throwing into cages because they're not allowed to have the freedom to compete? That's not consent. But all the other things that are going that are going right in the system. There's nothing going right with the system. That depends on how you look at it. Every, there's there's a change going the whole on thing is pointing to theft. You think the system is good? Can you point a gun? Theft. Can you, can you point the gun and point at your friends and family and take their money and call it taxes? Can you do that yourself? I mean, don't be a, I can't do that myself. Don't no. be a coward and pass it off to the cops to do it for you. If you can't do it yourself, why support it then? I'm okay with living in the system. Though. You're okay with most people doing the violence for you. Most people are okay with living in the system because they don't know about the matrix. They don't know about the system they're forced to be born into. People do know. The problem is most people they they know what they know that there's something wrong with the government and they right. accept that and, and hey, they acknowledge yeah. it. But if people do don't that, care. Time, That's the problem. And I, I hate that people don't care. A lot of my good friends don't care, and it bothers me that they don't care what goes on because they just see the government as this orderly force that maintains order, passes laws, not necessarily good laws, but they, the government maintains order. They don't maintain order. When was, they the maintain order when was the last time we had a massive riot? in this country that was over something cool. Uh, well, I could point out a lot of different stuff that uh, the government drum bonds children overseas. The government has over a million people in cages to humanize. 75% of for, for victimless crimes. Uh, if I were to smoke a plant, I'd be drawn to a cages. You can look at a lot of it. The government is nothing but chaos. It doesn't create order. You look at the unsustainability of social security. Unsustainability. You look at Detroit finally filing for bankruptcy. This will happen to every single city that's government controlled. Unfunded liabilities. In the very beginning, they put off the cost to the next generation to look after it because, of course, the politicians and the right. passes it then we're not alive then they forced it onto us now finally the whole thing is going to collapse the whole thing is going to go to bankruptcy it, it, it takes over an hour for the police to respond to 911 calls in, in, in Detroit you call that order that's chaos that's not order because the order has collapsed that's because government of monopoly on law collapse that's what happens that's why you see Europe finally collapsing with the euro with their monopoly on currency that's why many banks uh, many cities in California already fall for bankruptcy it's unsustainable inevitably it collapses it's like Rome did it all comes to it's but what you're getting at is the inherent flaws in the system, and the system needs to be reformed in order for it to maintain you know what, itself. You know what reform is? There's another way of saying that the last 99 attempts didn't work. Isn't that cut insanity to keep beating your head against the wall and thinking, no, this way it's going to work, this way it's going to work. You can't use violence to solve complex problems. That's the only way the government knows how to solve problems. It's, just, it's not run as an efficient, effective machine as it would be as a, as a private business. Where well, they actually look to the cost incentive, cost, uh, the risk-taking values of actually making movements and measurements. So government doesn't function as, as efficient, you would think. It's not designed to. I mean, personally, I'm more of a proponent of large government because I believe that large government in the Communism. right light. Yes. That government in the right light if government is done correctly, can provide and defend and protect and maintain order in a way that makes, by and large, at least 85% of the people happy should all of those laws be based off of moral guidelines that are collectively agreed on by the people. Tax rate? If can you do that, can you steal from other people? Can you take if your gun? If that money... Can you take a gun and point it to friends and take their money? If that money... If that money was guaranteed to yeah. go to things, like the political it doesn't matter. Who cares what happens? Who cares what they do with the money they stole from you? It's wrong and immoral and evil to steal from you in the first place. I don't care what the thug or the mafia does. Some, they're, they're known to donate to charity at times. So what? I don't care. It's wrong and immoral and evil to steal from another human being in the first place. I gotta go. I'm late for a test. All right, well, hey, let me pass sorry, you some. I'm really uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pass this. Who was right, the third man. party you voted for? I wrote a green party. Right on. <laughs> uh, Alright man, take you. it easy. Good to see you, good to see you. So, uh, I got a libertarian joke for you. No, go ahead, right. sir. Why did the libertarian cross the road? Please, unlight at me. None of your fucking business. <laughs> Am I being detained? Yeah, uh, to get off of this monopoly on road systems. <laughs> cool, man. Nice, nice. Good to see you, Tyler. Good to yeah. see you too, man. Good to man? see you, Val. <laughs> How are you? Good, good, great, yeah. It's burning anarchy. Have a good time. Um, it's not as uh, hot and humid as uh, it would be. I guess maybe it's a shade, but... Yeah, like, man. Uh, Happy 9-11. All right, that's right, right? 9-11. So where were you guys on uh, on that fateful day? Computer class, fourth grade. And how did you feel attacked? Did like someone hurt you? First grade. Huh? I didn't do anything. You didn't do anything? Yeah, no, I was first grade. I remember first just got home from school and like on all channels. They just let us out. All plays. Yeah? Where were you? Yeah, that was in high school, like, just class. They brought a TV, they rolled it in. Hey, look at this. If, 
<laughs> if only we knew then that it was like the death of American liberty. You know? <laughs> it took a while to catch on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, new Cold War. Yeah, yeah. New Cold War. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, of course. I mean, I, I thought it was successful in what they wanted to do, which was get American involved and take freedom. Right. Which Americans patriot actually. You know. It's kind of funny, I had a teacher, a political science teacher, who was going around in this classroom saying, yeah, we, we went to war to, to get Osama bin Laden. It's like, all right, two wars, you know, millions of, uh, well, uh, now it's like over 1.5 million people dead now. Uh, trillions of dollars spent to get one person. Then why didn't accept the offer when the Taliban said, hey, we got Osama bin Laden, we'll give him up to you, so is some evidence that's involved in terrorist activity, and you can have it before 9-11. The weeks coming up to 9-11, there's a press White House conference saying, hey, uh, what, what is the White House, uh, you know, thoughts on Actually, the Taliban giving up Osama bin Laden, and uh, I was like, "Yeah, no comments." You know, well, even bin Laden was like hands off, yeah. like, "Oh, sh I didn't do that. What are you talking about?" Nobody yeah, ever really saw that. I don't care. So stupid. I mean, America supporting the back in the eighties. He was fighting. He was fighting. Yeah, trained so. Yeah, it's a weird story. Yeah, they gave him the weapons. They gave him the the money. They gave him all the information, and uh, and it's like, where did they get all this weapons from? Like uh, the, the chemical weapons in uh, in Iraq. They gave him those weapons. Yeah. Oh, are you are you curious? What? How government is immoral? Well, you see. Wait. Look at my fancy debit card. Like I have a certain flag. Oh shit! Oh, can you show this? What? Let's, let's, can you show this? Yeah, we're going free market anarch. What? Yeah, can you, can you show the other uh, flag? Are you put your number in? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's for YouTube channel. All right, man. That is so cool, man. Yeah. That is so cool. Uh, how did you come about uh, anarcho-capitalism? Um, or voluntarism, so or... Uh, I, I guess... I started out as like a libertarian, and I tried to make my, my whole belief system as consistent as possible. And really, to be as consistent as possible, you have to go to anarcho-capitalism, because any other version, you're supporting things that are inconsistent with being pretty liking. Yeah. yeah. So what did you think of the guy I was talking to who said, was, yeah, we can just go back to squawking and bumbling at each other if we don't have the government. And like, like I, I pretty much asked him three questions you do because he was waiting for you. And yeah. he just went, no, no, no. Like, you just woke him up and he was crying. No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that was so cool, man. That's so cool. I think that was all right, an uh, All right, so... Yeah, and I, and I found like a lot of anarch and all the anarcho capitalists I've met, uh, I've never come hear them saying that they would violently force their ideas onto me, right? I, I, I hear communists, I hear a lot of other people, like every other kind of political ideology out there, and, and the, the way, the end result is like, I will force my purpose onto you. So the, the term is always like, well, we just get the government to do this. Right. It's like, well, what if I don't want the government to do that? Right? <laughs> it's like, oh, I didn't want to pay for that. Right? Okay. Yeah. Goodness. That's so cool, man. Uh, well, we're part of an organization uh, called Liberty RVA. It's uh, an organization of anarchists. Uh, so it's pretty cool that actually we meet another one like you. It's like it's kind of hard uh, to find them, I guess, in this person all around here. Iron Man, you met a Green Party, or that's pretty rare too. That is kind of rare too. I haven't met a Green Party. Green Party. <laughs> it's just student amnesty, right? Like that's the biggest issue. Yeah. I don't know. It's a green You're gonna hang out with the new. That's why I would. Do. Let's make the government use them. Right? They're going to ban the Green Party. Yeah, yeah. Like, isn't that run by uh, Ralph Nader? Yeah, it's like a you know, Mendy does. For a while, Green Party, I think, it was trying to run for, for that platform a while ago. Yeah, I think like, it was uh, after he actually ran. I curse his name every single time I, uh, I see a cop and, like, fuck it, put my seatbelt on. Uh, and it's because of him, you know. It's like I have to wrinkle shirts or something like that. Or the threat not, not to allow me to have my own, um, uh, uh, be uh, mature enough as an adult to know what, what, what safety is, right? He has to force that onto everyone else. I would wear a seatbelt if I wanted, a, you know, I wear a seatbelt, but not because some law tells me to. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll wear a helmet because I feel I want to be safe. Don't force me. I mean, if someone wants to fly through a windshield, they can if they want. Exactly, right? Um, and you, you look at uh, a lot of the problems anyways on the roadways is because of government uh, traffic signs and uh, traffic lights. And that you're not really paying attention to the environment or to other people, you just pay attention to that light. Oh, yeah. Right? The worst thing about traffic... Yeah! 
is that like one person trying to turn will stop an entire flow of people and they have every right to cross the road sure but when you stop that whole flow of people now all those other people who are trying to make turns they're all gridlocked now because of the red light they're all locked in the same position and now you're going to start side swiping people just to get to the lane you need to be in the whole time it just yeah. it like and it's good because people can't cro safely cross the street but it's horrible because if you're trying to make turns like you're in gridlock now yeah yeah at least in rush hour and, and in europe they've removed all the traffic lights and stop signs and all that stuff and actually traffic congestion went down traffic accidents went down yeah they have circles right of way i mean it works yeah i'm cal by the way Derek. Derek, pleasure to meet you, Derek. Pleasure to meet you, man. This is so cool. This is great, man. Uh, I, well, for me, I feel very strong in that this is pretty much where anarchy is going to first break out here in this state. Uh, I'm, I'm, we, we do this pretty much as often as we can coming out here, uh, especially like on first Fridays. Uh, next week, I'm going to be out here pretty much every single day and just uh, trying to help people let go of, of uh, the politics, let go of voting, let go of the illusion that government has their vested interest in, you know, your life, liberty, and happiness. They care. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they care how much they can give them, right? How much loyalty. I mean, you, can, uh, you know, it was like, I mean, now it's like 30% support I mean, Syria, and Obama's like, we're going to do this, man. Yeah. It's like, I'm, I, don't care, I don't care what people think, we're going to do it. I don't know, I, yeah. I think Putin was pretty gangster uh, about just, it, right? He just checkmated it. He was like, all right, well, you can give me the chemical weapons, and then they don't have to invade. So I guess we'll figure it out in a week from now. Yeah. You hear about that? They'll probably do it anyway. It's inevitable, they have to. Because uh, they don't exist. They need to keep the distractions. Uh, it's all a big distraction from I mean, the problem that's going on here at home. I mean, Obama was just like, well, you know, if they do this, then we're gonna do it. And they did it, and now, now all America will look like a pussy and they didn't do it. Just like people realize. It's inevitable that they go to war with someone in anyways at some point. The whole entire military industrial system is gonna designed to to be funded on that. They they have to inevitably to go. If you didn't have some war, then people would start saying, hey, why is all this weird stuff happening in the country? Right. I feel yeah, in their country, not our country. And I feel like, in a way it's gonna get a distract from the terrible policies inside. Yeah, I think for the most part, I also just uh, like people who do want to help and protect our freedoms here. And in a way, maybe in a, in a way, it uh, shifts the direction for people who actually want to create some kind of change, some, something positive, and they send them overseas instead, so they can do a lot more of the uh, what the, the Boston um, martial law system and get ready to put a lot of this stuff in place. So you, you remove all the people who actually want to help. They're over season dying instead of realizing that it's here at home where you're losing your freedoms not overseas all right so it's a big distraction to remove everyone else's actual vested interest and actually feed so uh, have you looked into the petrodollar anymore like a lot of people have argued that the entire u.s economy the only way it can stay a world reserve currency is through war right. if you stop war america goes bust overnight so let's cheer it on dude until yeah, yeah. that until that dollar is worthless we got to keep killing it's people. inevitable well we got bitcoin now right uh i got an app too on my phone uh blockchain you too i got That's Bitcoin wallet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice, is, is your landlord gonna take Bitcoins? I know, right? Eventually one day, well, we're still working on a pamphlet. Uh, my computer was down for a little while, but we're putting out an algorithm pamphlet. Uh, so then there's gonna be some information on Bitcoin. So it's pretty much tailored towards uh, existing businesses and like uh, rising entrepreneurs and people to understand the realization of what taxation is and regulations. Um, Money's only like the dollar's only worth something because people believe it's worth something. Yeah. It's not backed by anything. Yeah, yeah. It's basically backed by force. Yeah, it's backed by force. Uh, using the unborn as collateral to uh to 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 get more loans and debts. Um, yeah, you sound like uh, a hippie, dude. I work really hard for my money. Get a job. Well, let me let me give you some pamphlets before uh, you know, like, I have to go. <laughs> so we passed out. Uh, we have another pamphlet right now. It's called Volunteerism. It'll be coming out. I gotta print those out soon. Uh, make an order for them. So yeah, peaceful parenting, um, anarchism pamphlets. Uh, so agorism pamphlet will be coming out soon. And I think that's uh, I don't know. That's, that's it's kind of important. That's kind of like, uh, pretty much the direction, the place where we have to kind of go. So it's just really cool, though, to meet uh, someone who understands anarcho-capitalism. That's uh, that's kind of rare, like you mentioned with the Green Party.
And over here in BC, we already have the black and the gold. Oh no, we didn't make like one of the coolest hipsters. Huh? Remember that hipster with the... Yeah, the yeah, yeah, with the anarchy symbol. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. Cool, man. Humanities and science, what are you studying? Uh, biology and chemistry. But something objective, good. Uh, I was studying criminal justice and it was nothing but propaganda and lies. I'm like, what the fuck am I wasting my money on here? like, uh, what is it called? Uh, yeah, it is. It is. Political science, yeah, it is. <laughs> Political pseudoscience is more more like it, actually. Yeah, and criminal justice, the same thing, too. Monopoly on law. Right. Monopoly on preferences, enforcing that on each other. Uh, well, hey, uh, at 6 o'clock, we're actually going to Banditos with other anarchists. Um, it's a dollar taco, three dollar margaritas. If you up for that? Uh, I mean, on your schedule. But yeah, definitely check out our website. We have a lot of events, mostly freedom gatherings and uh, spreading spreading anarchy. Yeah? Yeah, I got something tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, just letting you know in the future and stuff like that. That is really cool, man. Really good to meet you, Dan. This is midlife crisis, though. I don't know how to respond to yeah, I gotta go. Yeah, man. Take good care, man. Liberate RBA!